All right. Okay, so this is a little bit of a different thing. I'm doing a, uh, a live YouTube with my phone from my garage. I know, it's a thrilling garage. Uh, because I, uh, I didn't get to do my four o'clock today because uh, we had an awesome plant sale that I needed to go to. The JC Ralston Arboretum in Raleigh has a once a year plant sale. It's called Ralston Blooms and it's great. Uh, you know, sales go to support the, um, uh, the Ralston Arboretum, which is always free to go to, except for this one day where tickets are like five bucks. And so I always get to go. Hey, Alex. And um, so it's, I'm a member at the Arboretum because I like to support plant stuff. And uh, so I got to go on Friday. Unfortunately, the plant sale started at four. So we got there early. Uh, I mean, we were like half an hour early, give or take. And um, we were still standing in line like I don't know, it was probably 100 yards from the actual, it was a crazy long line. I didn't know there were gonna be nearly that many people there. So um, the plants I actually went to go get, I had a list in my story supply notebook and uh, the first four were taken. So, you know, that was, uh, I'm gonna check out and spend money on love plants. Nice, Troy. <laughs> uh, so the first like four were already gone. I, I, I raced in and I knew more or less where they'd be because they're in alphabetical order and it's totally gone. So the one thing I wanted to get, um, I did probably did get a little bit of sun, but also the lighting's weird and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. It was pretty overcast. It was kind of raining by the time we left, but it's, it was only sprinkling a little bit. Um, they had a, um, it's a yellow-leaved uh, anise bush. It was like a, it'll grow to be like a tree basically, but it's an evergreen, or I guess ever yellow, because it's all yellow leaves. Uh, and it smells like licorice a little bit when you rub the leaves. Um, but I really wanted to get another one of those because I have one that I don't think made it through the winter. This is my sort of impromptu plant stand. Uh, that's where I put my winter plants, or my plants for the winter when it gets real cold. And uh, I don't know if that plant made it, so I wanted to get a new one and somebody bought all of them. Uh, well, had taken them and put them in piles. The piles are sacred at this thing. So you grab your stuff, you can put it in a pile, you can leave your carts outside the ropes, and you can put your stuff in a cart if you want. But like somebody had three or four of these bastards and I was like, mm, I really wanted one of those. So no plant for me, but I only want, I, I still ended up getting like seven plants. Um, and so I'll show those off because people wanted to see them. Uh, and then inside my in-laws are here and they're making, um, or my mother-in-law is making pizza for Pizza Friday, so this is gonna be a little bit of a truncated thing. Uh, I'm not gonna be going for an hour and a half or whatever, of course, so. Uh, but uh, people still wanted to see stuff, so I thought I'd show you. Now, I will warn you, most of these plants just look like, I don't know, just look like plants, because uh, it's barely spring. So this stuff is barely green. But, why the heck not? So let me switch the camera around. There we go. All right. Um, so I have a couple little things here. They're looking real sad because it's winter. Um, I can't ever remember the name of this, the technical name. This is like um, uh, Jack in the no um, Jack in the Pulpit. I think it's called Jack in the Pulpit. Some people call it Wandering Jew, but it's not quite that. It's a different sort of thing. Um, this is the purple version. Oh, here's what it's called. Um, it's an Acrecia. There we go. This is a giant one. And this will get really big. These are actually like little baby new leaves that's just grown. But these leaves will be, you know, this big by the time this thing is done. Uh, it's actually getting ready to bust out of this pot, so I need to put it in the ground. Um, these guys haven't come back yet. I'm hoping they will, but you never know. Uh, Dicolectra seborrecta. This is a pretty cool little plant. Ought to be a nice bunch of flowers. We've got a uh, Asian blue star. These are always a classic good looker. What's this guy? Oh, this is, um, it's kind of, kind of nothing here. I don't know. We'll see if anything comes out of this pot. I'm not real hopeful, but we'll see. Um, this is a bag of hostas. These are all hosta rhizomes that a buddy of mine dug up and get, got to me. So, um, he just gave that to me. He said, Hey, you want some hostas? And I said, sure. And so he gave me this bag, big grocery bag full of them. So that'll be pretty cool. Uh, this one, I got several iris because... Um, iris are dead easy to grow and they're pretty uh, they're pretty fun. I really like the, the blooms and that sort of thing. You get foliage all year long. It's nice uh, spear-shaped foliage. And they spread and multiply like crazy. So every three or four years you can break them up and give them to your friends, which is neat. So I like that. Let's see if I can... Uh, yeah, there we go. Got chat messages. Cool. Um, I don't remember which ones are which. I got like three. <laughs> and another one. And they all look the same is the thing. Because these are all extra tall bearded irises. They get like, I don't know, 
they say 36 inches, but um, that might be a little bit lower. They usually get about four feet or so, uh, these tall ones. So I'm pretty psyched to get these giant ones. I got three different varieties. This one's called Kissed by the Sun, which I believe is like this crazy orange and yellow one, which ought to be pretty neat. Uh, and then Change of Pace, if I remember correctly, is an all white bearded iris bloom with like a, um, like a dark purple fringe around the flower. Plants and pens. Yeah, well, I don't usually use my pens outside. If I do, if, actually, my outside pens are always ballpoints or something like that. Um, this one's called Freedom Song, and I actually don't remember which one this is, but I think this is a bright white flower with uh, like a like a lavender tinge around the edge of the, each uh, petal, which ought to be pretty cool. And these grow really well for me. I've got tons of them outside right now, but all of mine are dark purple or light purple. So I've got like a crazy orange and then a couple of different uh, different varieties. Um, you can see this one got broken off a little bit in transit. It's all right, Iris don't care. Uh, and then this is gonna be pretty cool, I think. Uh, this is a uh, Coreopsis, but it's called Gold Standard. It's actually pretty huge. Hey, Sandra, thanks for the heads up on the mulch. Uh, five extra 10 bucks is not bad, but I have a truck. There it is. And uh, I get it for like 20 bucks for a bed full of of mulch and I get like the pine stuff. So I might check it out, but I don't, I don't know. I think I think 20 bucks for a, a, you bought 30 bags. Yeah, nice, not bad, why not? Um, but I get, that's about a yard worth of, uh, about a yard worth of um, stuff for like 20 bucks in the back of my truck. Anyway, this will eventually, this little plant, which has these nice little green leaves, this is gonna be a six foot tall Coreopsis, which is a, a yellow flower, probably about this big around, uh, but there will be tons of these and six foot tall, so it's like, I don't know, as tall as I am, uh, plus a couple inches. Uh, so I'm pretty psyched about this. And it's like 10 bucks, which is not bad. These come back all the time. They're also known as tick seed, if you don't know what Coreopsis is. Uh, but it's really good for pollinators, um, bees and hummingbirds and all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, this will be six foot. Wait a sec though, because the next thing, which sadly broke in transit. Um, I have these in the bed of my truck. <laughs> the whole stem broke off, darn it. Um, but this is a, um, this is a Dahlia called Dahlia Imperialis. And if you don't know Dahlias, they have these very complex blooms that are probably this big in diameter or yeah, ish each. Um, and this is actually a Dahlia tree. So this is an herbaceous perennial, which means it will die back to the ground when it freezes. Um, and then every season it will grow. I just went ahead and stuck the stick in there. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. We'll see if it comes back. But this thing will be like um, eight to 10 feet tall every season. So what, right now it's just kind of a root. And why I'm not too worried about this breaking off is it's only just starting to grow and it doesn't matter. It'll just put up more stems. Um, but yeah, it's gonna go <laughs> small, go big. That's true. So I've got a couple of things that are gonna be real big, but I have a lot of fence line in the back that I actually need to uh, put plants along. So that's gonna be pretty good. Yeah, eight to 10 foot Dahlia. It's a Dahlia tree. You can Google it up, man. Dahlia Imperialis, um, but it's pretty awesome. Yeah, there are plenty of plants that do that actually. Brugmansias, which are angels trumpets, will do that. They'll be like 12 feet tall every year and they die back entirely to the ground and just come up from the roots. Um, which is handy because it does get it does freeze around here. So uh, this next one is extra unimpressive. Uh, it's just this kind of. I can just take it out of the dirt. It doesn't even have roots right now. It's just this bulb. <laughs> but this is a uh, giant voodoo lily, which is going to be real cool. This is going to be a forty-inch tall plant, so you know, just shy of four feet. Um, and um, part sun to shade. So this will go in the backyard, probably near the house, but this will have giant leaves and then like big lily flowers. It's gonna be real pretty, uh, but I haven't gotten any of these yet. This is the Indian giant. So I uh, just saying to be we don't plant anything until after Mother's Day here. Yeah, if I wait until, well, I mean, I can plant all summer here because it doesn't get tremendously hot, but it does get pretty hot. Um, so at least for, you know, these kinds of plants. Um, iris or whatever, they don't care at all. I've got some iris over there in a bag that I cut up like two years ago. They're still viable um, rhizomes. And then this guy is another one I'm pretty psyched about. It's not super impressive. I mean, it's not like it's rare or anything, but this is a yellow yarrow. I forget what the name is, this one. Could be a bulb, could be an onion. I, yeah, <laughs> this is true, it could be an onion. Uh, this one's just called Moonshine. And I really like the, the leaves on this guy. Um, they're like these frosty white leaves. 
Uh, oh look, there's the, uh, there's actually a bud in there already. That's kind of nice. Between feet and inches and realize I'm, oh yeah, so uh, three feet is about, is about a meter. So three and a half feet or something is a meter. So these are gonna be um, pretty big, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this one is pretty nice. Irises are flags, you know, oh yeah, cool. Uh, yeah, iris, uh, you can grow all over the country. I mean, they have them up in Ohio where you get deep freezes and frost lines and all that kind of shit. Uh, but this is a, a yarrow and bees and stuff. Pollinators love this. I have a lot of pollinators in my backyard. Uh, eight to 10 feet is three meters. Yeah, there you go. So um, this will be bright yellow. See, I have a picture? Yeah. It'll have these big flat heads. So they'll be probably, the heads of flowers will be about that big around. And then they're just kind of flat across the top like a table but they are made up of tons of tiny little flowers. And I've got a bunch of these in red and I've got one in like strawberry or something that's like red on the outside and has like a tiny yellow center. It looks really cool, but this is gonna be uh, bright yellow. So um, I'm pretty psyched about that. But that's really all I got because the first several things on my list didn't work out. But um, that's the way it goes sometimes, man. Sometimes, oh, I've got a, here's a, here's a tub of amaryllis. <laughs> Uh, you get these, you see these around Easter a lot, but um, these haven't bloomed or anything yet. They won't bloom until probably, I don't know, Mother's Day, actually, somewhere around there. Looks like there's some hardy geranium in there as well, as so these little guys are. Uh, but I've got a couple of tubs of those that need to go in the ground. This right here is actually my favorite gardening tool. I have a lot of gardening tools, of course, but this is the best one. Knock some of the dirt off of it. This is a combination uh, knife. It's got a serrated edge on the other side. It's cupped. You can't really see it probably, but it has, me there we go. It's got measurements um, in inches and centimeters and stuff um, for, uh, uh, for planting, for digging, for weeding. If you need to know you have a bulb that needs to go in three inches, you just kind of poke it in three inches, sort of move the stuff around and you sort of put it in the dirt and then work it back and forth, drop a bulb in and smooth it over and you're done. This is an amazing tool. So you can find these on Amazon. They're probably like 20, 25 bucks. Um, they're from, um, a Japanese company I can't remember the name of. Let me see if I have the the sheath around here somewhere. This is a bunch of boxes because <laughs> I use the cardboard to. Oh, here we go. Um, uh, Nisaku. Nisaku specialty knife function blade. So check that out. Um, yeah, I used <laughs> I used all this uh, cardboard not because I'm a hoarder, but because uh, it's really good for suppressing weeds. So I said I got a truck full of mulch. And that truck full of mulch goes on top of laid down cardboard when I, when I want to choke out grass. It's super efficient. Um, and then this here, <laughs> this poor thing, this is actually a night blooming cirrus, which is a weirdo plant. I mean, look at the weird leaves on this thing. Uh, but it has these amazing flowers that only bloom at night and they, each flower only blooms one night. Um, and uh, uh, then they just kind of wilt off, but it's a really cool plant. Unfortunately, it froze, and so a lot of the like sort of ancillary leaves here on the outside fringes got a little bit too frozen. I'll be pruning this back pretty hard once I figure out exactly how much of it I need to prune back, but um, the base plant is totally fine. And actually, these leaves are awesome because if you tear off a leaf, you can just stick it in the in a pot or some dirt, and it will like this. I just stuck in a pot, and it's a new plant. <laughs> so super easy to propagate. Really cool. Um, I got some bulbs over here that need to be put in the ground. Uh, mostly these are gladiolus. Uh, there might be a couple of other things in here. This one's already trying to sprout on me. I need to put them back in the ground. Uh, I dug them up. These are little gladiolus babies. Little babies. Um, I dug up a bed because I was taking some weeds out of it. Some very tough Bermuda grass. So I've got a bunch of these bulbs. But um, these have actually just started blooming in the backyard. Maybe I'll go out and show you these, but these are some beautiful mixed tulips that I got from the Netherlands. A good friend of mine went to Holland. Um, these are all inspected and all that kind of jazz, so they're legal. Uh, but I went to Holland where most of these tulips come from and brought me back a whole bunch of tulips, which was really rad. So um, I put them in the ground and they bloomed, which is neat. Tulip tour, yeah, all right. There's like three of them blooming, but I'll take you out back. It's gonna get dark for a sec. I'm moving through my house. It does smell like pizza. Oh, there's shit, they're eating pizza. This is, uh, this is the wonderful Audrey, my father-in-law, Burl. Deb's over there in the kitchen. We have a lot of Easter 
in this area over here. This is the other dog. This is Tater. And it's Scraggles. He knows who feeds him from the table, so he stands here pretty much. Yep. There he is. So. Oh, yeah, people said nice Soho, Audrey. There's Audrey's Soho. Oh, more plants. These are baby spider plants. My, uh, the secretary at our department said, hey, I've got a bunch of baby spiders on my desk if you want some. Or spider babies on my desk. And I said, I don't know that I need spider babies, but it turns out they're plants. So I'm going to put those in dirt soon. There's a nose up here on top of a plant, or on top of a cat tree. Hi, nose. Hi. Want to say hi? No, nope, that's as much as we're going to get. There's the fat one. She's just sniffing some stuff. <laughs> Thanks, Cameron. I appreciate it. <laughs> Let's go back real quick, and then I'm going to go eat some pizza. So. <laughs> this is my backyard. Um, as you can see, I have a lot of work to do back here. Uh, this part, everything from here over, actually, I took a sod cutter to. I missed a spot back there in the corner, but this I've taken the sod off of, and I'm going to basically double dig that with a fork. Um, this is a this is a garden fork. Super good tool for digging in case you don't want to use a shovel because it breaks up the, uh, the soil, it goes into the soil more easily. You can sort of mix stuff around. Uh, but this is all going to be double dug. Um, I'm going to amend it with a whole bunch of compost and probably some chicken grit granite. And uh, this is all going to be a, sh a semi-shade bed back here. Uh, this is my paper plant, which actually has only just... Uh, somewhere is my keys. Yeah, my keys are somewhere in here probably. Um, this is a paper plant, which is a glorious plant. These were all, I had a picture of these on my Instagram, but these were all like little yellow and white flowers and now it's starting to leaf out. So the flowers are falling off. Um, this right here is a bleeding heart. You can kind of see why. This whole plant, by the way, since y'all were impressed that the, um, those other plants are gonna be like six feet tall. This one will probably get, I don't know. It's probably about three feet tall now, maybe a little bit less. Um, and it'll probably get another foot or two, maybe three. So maybe double this size. It'll probably be up to around here by the time it's finished growing. This grew in two weeks. So some of this stuff really just shoots up out of the ground as soon as it uh, detects the right weather. Um, this is a little Mahonia beeli, which has gotten like three times as big as it was when I put it in. I'm gonna have to either trim it back or move it or I don't know, something. It sort of got a lot of ice on it and fell forward a little bit. So I'm gonna have to prop it back up because under here, Away from this stupid henpeck garbage, which is a terrible weed. Um, there. These are toad lilies. I might just move the toad lilies, actually. I don't know. But they're a really pretty lily with a very, very delicate little flower. It's like a... I mean, the flower's probably this big, each one. They come in these sprays of flowers. And they're totally beautiful. And these are hostas coming up. With, these are going to be big leaves when they unfurl. I mean, look at these things. Um, there's another hosta just coming up out of the ground. Looking cool. Well, hellebores, these are really interesting plants because those are actually green flowers. So that's always neat. Um, some more little ground cover-y guys. That's my vegetable garden out in the back there. It doesn't look very big from here, but it's about four or five by uh, 10 feet. This is our sedum garden that I built for Audrey. It needs to get a little, little bit of mulch on it, but it's got ice plants, various sedums. These are very cool plants and dead easy to grow. You just put them near dirt and they will grow. And this will be about this tall and it'll have spikes of flowers that come off of it. This one's called Angelina and it'll spread everywhere like wildfire, which I love because I like a good ground cover. It's even going onto the patio. It's like, I don't care. It's not dirt, cool, whatever. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that, oh, they emptied the cooler out here. <laughs> the yellow that you see here, I actually cleaned off this table two days ago. This is pollen. Um, it's everywhere. This uh, container actually has lotus and water lily in it, which is always fun. Um, this garden is in serious need of some uh, some some TLC. I got to do a lot of uh, weeding back here. It's a little privet, a little contorted privet, and that weirdo thing. Uh, yeah, if you want, <laughs> Angelina is awesome. You can't really eat it, I don't think, but it's also. Um, uh, pretty much indestructible, and if you just get it near some dirt, hell, I'll bring you some if you want, Bijou. Um, so here are the, the tulips. This in this little bed. Um, it wouldn't stop raining, and actually I've carved out all of this as well, so I need to double dig all of this, but um, some of these haven't opened yet. All right, I'll bring you some Angelina, no problem, man. 
the least I can do for that cool ass hat. <laughs> and these have unfortunately closed because it's nighttime. But you get an idea of what these look like. Sort of bright red and yellow. I don't know what the rest of them are gonna be, but uh, some of these have more than one bulb, uh, bud on them. There's a bunch hidden under here uh, that haven't quite come up out of the, the, uh, the pine straw yet. This is a uh, reblooming lilac, which is getting, getting kind of dark, but um, it does have lots of little lilac-y flowers. I'm gonna smell it right quick. It smells as good as you might think it does. Uh, these haven't even really popped open much yet, but this will bloom all summer long. It's great. It's called boomerang, I think is the, the variety. Um, I'm gonna burn this holly. I'm gonna burn that holly. It's been sitting there drying for quite a while. These are daylilies. They haven't done much yet except come up out of the ground. These were each one plant when I put them in, one little bulb, and they've all multiplied three or four times. So that's a, the briefest tour of my backyard garden. Uh, but I'm going to go eat some pizza. So thanks for hanging out for these 20 minutes. And sorry I didn't get to do my usually scheduled broadcast. But uh, hopefully this was a little bit of fun. And I'll see you all... Uh, well, next week is actually the Atlanta Pin Show. I will hopefully be doing a live thing from the Atlanta Pin Show. Victory Garden? Dude, I watched so much Victory Garden growing up. Uh, but yeah, I will hopefully be doing a live thing from the Philly Pin Show. Not Philly, from the Atlanta Pin Show. So I will see y'all later. Sandra, I will see you Sunday. Yep, that's right. I almost forgot about that. But um, yeah, so we'll do a live thing there and I will see y'all then. Peace out, y'all. Bye.